Hey there, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. A little over four years ago, I made a top 10 facts video about the Appalachian Mountains. Now that video isn't terrible, but our channel's come a long way since October 12, 2017, and oh my how the world has changed since then. But the Appalachian Mountains, they haven't changed. Well, not enough to notice. So why am I making another facts video about the Appalachian Mountains? Well, for two reasons. First, the comment section of that other video is amazing in that so many people contributed additional facts. And I've wanted to make another video addressing the information we received the most. The second reason for this video is that I've learned so much about the Appalachian Mountains since 2017. See, our channel is sort of a travel nature channel, and Carolyn and I have made about 200 videos in the Appalachian Mountains. So I want to share what I've learned with you and clarify some of the ankle-deep information in that last Appalachian Facts video. But this video isn't all about facts. There is some breathtaking scenery in this video that we've captured all over the Appalachian Mountain chain. So be sure to watch until the very end. Also, keep in mind that these are debatable facts, so this isn't your normal run-of-the-mill generic facts video. So go ahead and pack a lunch because we're going exploring. Make sure you leave a comment and don't forget I've left links in the description. So get ready to have your mind blown. Here are 10 debatable facts about the Appalachian Mountains. Number 10. How do you pronounce Appalachian? It depends on who you ask. Okay, quick story. When I made that other video back in 2017, I pronounced Appalachian, Appalachian. And boy, did I get lit up in the comments. People were demanding that I pronounce it the right way. I've spent most of my life in the Appalachian Mountain region, and I was really embarrassed that according to many people in the comments, I was saying it wrong. I even made a silly but heartfelt apology video, but I kept asking myself, where did I come up with Appalachia? Well, it turns out, despite all the comments correcting me, and despite the fact that I made an apology video, I wasn't really wrong. There's an ongoing regional debate as to how one should pronounce Appalachian. Strictly speaking, if you're from the southern region of the Appalachian Mountains, you pronounce it just like that, Appalachian. And this pronunciation is common throughout much of the mountain chain. However, there are other mountain regions in which Appalachian is more common. Still, there are some other mountain folk who pronounce it Appalachian. And that's not all. One website claims that there are at least six different ways to pronounce Appalachian. You know, one would think that this should be a live and let live kind of thing. But trust me, it's not. Like everything else these days, it's a pretty heated debate. I'm stuck pronouncing it Appalachian because I've already retrained my brain. How do you pronounce Appalachia? Let us know in the comments. Number 9. What's in a name? Speaking of names, one of the facts in the last video I made was about the naming of the Appalachian Mountains. That Hernando de Soto, or a surviving member of his expedition, named the mountains after an indigenous American tribe, the Appalachians. The problem is that the home of the Appalachian tribe during the time of de Soto was in Florida, nowhere near the Appalachian Mountains. And everyone knows Florida only has one mountain, am I right? Though variations of the story about DeSoto naming the Appalachian Mountains are repeated on numerous websites and YouTube videos, there's no evidence to support the claim that DeSoto or anyone else on his expedition designated the mountains of the East Appalachian. The first time the mountain range was designated Appalachian on a map was back in 1564 by an artist who traveled with a French Huguenot expedition by the name of Jacques Lemoyne de Morgues. I wish to apologize to the good people of France and all French-speaking people everywhere for the way I butchered that name. Les anyway, saying that there's no proof that DeSoto or anyone else on DeSoto's expedition named the Appalachian Mountains for whatever reason is one of those, but actually, kind of statements that make people think there's a deeper hidden truth that's only now being revealed. But actually, it's not that big of a deal. Let me explain. So let's agree Lemoyne's 500-year-old map is the first time we see Appalachian designated on a map. That still doesn't explain why Lemoyne used that name. He had to get it from somewhere. The Huguenot expedition was after DeSoto's expedition, so it's 
it's likely that Lemoyne used Appalachian because it had already been designated during DeSoto's expedition. There was also something in the comment section of the facts video I made back in 2017 about Appalachian jewelry found in the Appalachian Mountains. Therefore, during the 16th century, the Appalachians operated in the mountains of northern Georgia, and that's why the name Appalachian ends up on a map. But this idea has never picked up any steam across disciplines, even if it is true. One argument against this idea is that the Appalachians were a pretty big deal where we now call Florida. If they were operating in the Appalachian Mountains, we'd have a lot more evidence than just a few pieces of jewelry. It's likely the Appalachian jewelry made its way into the mountains through trade. But honestly, I don't know, and you don't really know either, because it's all speculation. Here's the real fact. Neither DeSoto or Lemoyne's map named the Appalachian Mountain Chain. You'll see what I'm talking about in the next fact. Number 8. Appalachian or Allegheny Regardless as to who named the Appalachian Mountains or when the Appalachian Mountains were designated on a map, the mountains of the east weren't officially called the Appalachians for another 300 years. There were several competing names. The mountains to the north were called the Alleghenies, and in the south they were called the Appalachians. But if you were referring to the entire mountain chain from north to south, they were called both the Alleghenies or the Appalachians. And it was perfectly okay to use both in the same conversation. So the two names were interchangeable, because why have one name when you can have two? Early on, Allegheny was picking up steam as the one name to name them all. For example, in 1810, John Norton used Allegheny Mountains while referring to the mountain chain as far south as Tennessee and Georgia. And by the middle of the 19th century, Allegheny was the front runner as it was strongly favored over Appalachian. And then this guy happened. Geographer Arnold Geo. Geo published an article in 1861 called On the Appalachian Mountain System. Now here's what's funny. He refers to all of these mountains as the Appalachians, but on the map he prepared, he still referred to the mountains as the Allegheny Mountains. So maybe he couldn't make up his mind either. But Geo's article was a pretty big hit because he was extremely informative. So everyone was like, this guy knows what he's talking about. Maybe we should listen to him. And do you know who did listen to Geo? John Wesley Powell, who also studied and wrote about the mountains of the East. He had an even better idea. Powell called the mountains on this side of the Great Valley, the Appalachian Mountain Ranges, and he called the mountains on this side of the Great Valley, the Allegheny Plateaus. And honestly, that really makes a lot of sense for more reasons than I can get into right now. But no, that's not what happened. Nevertheless, this is when Appalachian began winning the name war. And even then, it wasn't like someone declared all of these mountains the Appalachians. Decades passed before these mountains were consistently designated the Appalachian Mountains. Number 7. Where are the Appalachian Mountains? This seems like a straightforward question, right? Wrong. You'll find all kinds of answers to this question. Definitions provided by authoritative sources vary on the precise boundaries of the Appalachians. Yes, you heard me right. Authoritative sources say different things. A lot of it has to do with the parameters of the discussion. Are we having a geological discussion, or are we talking about hiking the Appalachian Trail? If you're planning to hike the Appalachian Trail, it doesn't do you a lot of good for someone to say, well, actually, the Scottish Highlands were once a part of the Appalachian Mountains. More on that later. One's existing worldview plays a role too, as well as where one is educated. Not how much education, but where. Colleges and universities are not necessarily in agreement when it comes to many different aspects of the Appalachian Mountains. Some universities are still teaching early 20th century stereotypes of the people who lived and live in the Appalachian Mountains, and these stereotypes have long since been debunked. One thing is for sure, the boundaries of the Appalachian Mountains have always been confusing and controversial. And listen, I love geology. You can spend as much time in these mountains as we do without learning a lot of geology. But when it comes to designating the boundaries of the Appalachian Mountains, I'm not sure geologists are helping the public's understanding as much as they're muddying the waters. Historically speaking, the Appalachian Mountains are here, or the mountain chain that runs north and south close to the east coast of the United States. But the Appalachian Mountains are also in Canada. But the Adirondack Mountains are not included in the Appalachian Mountain chain, because geologically the Adirondacks are a part of the Great Plateau of the Canadian Shield. That is, unless you have an atlas like this, or countless other maps, or visit one of hundreds of websites which don't even include the 
name Adirondacks, rather the Adirondacks are included with the Appalachian Mountain chain. Now here and there, a website will include the Adirondacks with a note saying that technically they're not a part of the Appalachian Mountains. For most people, this is no big deal, but it kinda is. Not necessarily with the Adirondacks, sadly I don't know much about the Adirondacks. I want to visit there soon. But when it comes to expanding or changing the boundaries, well, there are political applications. Don't worry, we're not going there in this video. Anyway, here are the real facts so far, just so you'll understand how muddy the water is. The origins of the name Appalachian are mysterious. We really don't know how it happened. It's pure speculation, and it always has been. And second, despite the fact that people living in different regions of the Appalachian mountain chain pronounce Appalachian differently, everyone thinks their way is right, and they will tell you all about it. And finally, the boundaries of the Appalachian mountain chain are somewhat debatable. And just wait, it gets better. Number 6. Appalachian Mountains in Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma? Okay, let's pretend you're from the Appalachian Mountains and for your birthday you want to go skydiving. Let's also pretend that you've been skydiving many times, and just to prove your skydiving skills, you want to be blindfolded. Okay, this seems to defeat the purpose of skydiving, but just go with it so I can make my point. For some strange cosmic Twilight Zone kind of reason, your plane is wildly off course by almost 800 miles, but the pilot thinks you're right over the drop zone. With the blindfold on, you jump, the parachute opens, and you land safely. You immediately realize you didn't land at the designated drop zone. You know you're in for a long hike, but that's no big deal. After all, you know the mountain ranges and the Appalachian Mountains mountains like the back of your hand. Naturally, you don't have cell service because you're in the middle of the mountains and you're used to that. After hiking to a small farmhouse, you find someone that might be able to help and as the conversation begins, you exchange similar salutations and common colloquialisms like afeard, meaning afraid, as in I'm afeard I missed the drop zone, and aim, or getting ready to do something, as in the farmer telling you that he don't mind helping you at all, he was just aiming to eat, and fur, as in the farmer telling you, you can wait here for a while and eat dinner with us, and you say yes because culturally you understand that he's supposed to offer and it's rude to say no. And you feel at home right when you walk in the door because you smell fried chicken, okra, corn, beans, cornbread, and sitting on the table is a pitcher of iced tea and there's no artificial sweetener anywhere to be found because this is a gallon of wholesome, wonderful southern sweet tea that might have as much as four cups of sugar. Of course you feel at home. This is the culture of the Appalachian Mountains, right? But right as you're walking in the door, you notice the farmer's license plate and that's when you realize you're not in the Appalachian Mountains, or are you? The Washita Mountains in Arkansas and Oklahoma are a lot like the Appalachian Mountains in almost every possible way aside the fact that they might be connected geologically. The Washitas are generally grouped with the Arkansas River Valley, an area between the Ozark and Washita Mountains. The river valley is characterized by flat lowlands covered in fertile farmland and lakes with occasional high peaks. Sound familiar? Here's how similar these mountain chains are. Since this segment began, you've been seeing video from the Alleghenies and the Appalachian Mountains, and even some video from the Blue Ridge Mountains. And if you live in or near the Ozarks or Washita Mountains, tell the truth, you had no idea. The Ozark Plateau, or the Ozark Mountains, and the Washita Mountains form the U.S. Interior Highlands, a small and often overlooked mountainous region between the Appalachian and Rocky Mountains. Geologically, the connection between the Appalachian, Ozarks, and Washita Mountains go back to the supercontinent Pangaea. I'll say more about Pangaea and how the supercontinent theory may connect mountain ranges all over the world in the next chapter. But there's more to this connection than what's underneath the surface. Culturally, these two regions are extremely similar as well, as people in the 19th century from the Appalachian Mountains mountains known as Hillman migrated to these interior mountains bringing their culture as well. Hey, let me take just a brief second to welcome you to the channel. We're so grateful when you watch any of our videos. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and clicked the bell for notifications. We read and respond to every comment, so please leave a comment. Again, thanks for watching. Now let's get back to the mountains. Number 5. 
Scottish Appalachian Mountains, And if defining the boundaries of the Appalachian mountain chain isn't already confusing, when I made that last video back in 2017, there were several viewers who believed that I should have included the Scottish Highlands and even the Atlas Mountains of Africa. Let me explain. Many scientists believe that a little over 300 million years ago, there was one supercontinent called Pangaea. And during this period, the Scottish Highlands, Appalachian Mountains, and the Atlas Mountains were all one enormous mountain chain with peaks higher than the Himalayas. Maybe that's why so many people are wearing kilts while hiking in the Appalachian Mountains. So, I see a connection. But just because these three mountain chains have some history together and occasionally share fashion trends, doesn't mean they share anything in common today. Now, this too is debatable, because what is the best way to designate the boundaries of any region? Do we use topography, geology, or do we use the shared culture of the people who live there? In other words, do we look at what's on top or underneath the surface, or do the people of that region define the boundaries for themselves? But here's why the Scottish Highlands and the Atlas Mountains cannot be included in the Appalachian Mountain chain. First, the Scottish Highlands and the Atlas Mountains were named long before Europeans explored the Appalachian Mountains, and before anyone designated the name Appalachian on a map based on an indigenous American tribe that didn't even live in the Appalachian Mountains. Second, these three mountain chains may share some geology, but the topography and the cultures are strikingly different. And finally, did you miss the part where these mountain chains are separated by thousands of miles and a very deep, dangerous ocean. So no, even though I'm very grateful for all the comments on that video, and I'm hoping you'll comment in this video, the Scottish Highlands and the Atlas Mountains should not be included in the Appalachian Mountain chain. That is, unless you're specifically talking about what the Earth may have looked like 300 million years ago. But that was then, and this is now. And I know what you're going to say, but Bill, Culturally, there is a huge connection considering that the Scots helped settle the Appalachian Mountains. Well, that's true. The Scots were a part of the great westward migration into the Appalachian Mountains in the early 19th century. But the Scots migrated all over the U.S., and their descendants continued to migrate, contributing bits and pieces of their culture everywhere they landed. And so did the Irish, and so did the German, and the list goes on and on. But what's so often overlooked is how much the indigenous Americans contributed to the Appalachian culture. Not to mention the fact that all of these influences together didn't exactly merge into one cohesive culture. There's a lot of nuance in the Appalachian Mountains. But hey, it's perfectly fine if you want to wear a kilt while hiking. Number 4. Lost in a mountain chain of mountain ranges. Okay, buckle your seatbelts, we're going for a long drive. The Appalachian Mountains are made of many mountain ranges, but when it comes to drawing lines between these ranges, the lines get kind of blurry. For example, many sources explain that the Blue Ridge Mountains run from Pennsylvania to North Georgia, but the mountain ranges in Pennsylvania and West Virginia are referred to as the Allegheny Mountains, and they are very different than the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. And it's only in Georgia and Virginia that the Blue Ridge Mountains are commonly referred to as the Blue Ridge Mountains, unless you're on the west side of Virginia. In that case, at least on a map, Map, it's the Allegheny Mountains or the Alleghenies. But sometimes they're still called the Blue Ridge Mountains by, well, a lot of people. Tourist websites and even locals will call these mountains the Blue Ridge Mountains. Listen, I live right between these two mountain ranges and trust me, it really depends on who you ask. Officially, the Blue Ridge Mountains are a larger subset of the Appalachian Mountains. In case you didn't know, they're called the Blue Ridge Mountains because they appear to have a blue hue. And mountain ranges like the Great Smoky Mountains are a subset of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which are again a part of the Appalachian Mountains. Officially, this makes the Blue Ridge Mountains the parent chain of the Great Smoky Mountain Range. But even though no one calls the Great Smoky Mountains the Blue Ridge Mountains, you can access the southern terminus of the Blue Ridge Parkway in Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So you might be asking yourself, why is it called Blue Ridge Parkway and not something like Smoky Mountain Parkway? Better yet, why isn't the Blue Ridge Parkway called the Appalachian Parkway? Maybe it's because mile marker one of the Blue Ridge Parkway is in Virginia where the Blue Ridge Mountains are actually called the Blue Ridge Mountains? Honestly, there's a very good reason it's called the Blue Ridge Parkway. We've made well over 100 videos all over the Blue Ridge Parkway. These videos are a lot of fun and they provide a lot of information. You can check out the playlist by clicking the tab at the top corner of your screen now, but I'll provide a link at the end of the video. Anyway, the Appalachian Mountains in Georgia are commonly referred to as the Blue Ridge Mountains. There's even a Blue Ridge, Georgia. Okay, a little side note, to develop tourism in Helen, Georgia, they came up with this Bavarian theme back in the late 60s and early 70s. I never really bought into it because being anywhere in Georgia during the summer is like asking 
for a heat stroke. I lived in Germany and there's no place in Germany that's as hot as anywhere in Georgia. Still, Helen's Bavarian Alpine theme has been a pretty big success. By the way, we have a Georgia playlist too. These videos are from our first year making videos and as you may imagine, they're pretty cringe. Still, these videos provide some interesting information. So, here's another tab. When you're traveling in the Appalachian Mountains from one mountain range to the next, sometimes you won't even know you've crossed into another mountain range because the scenery doesn't really change at all. So, the lines on the map are just that, lines on a map. But sometimes there are transition zones that are entirely unique like where the Alleghenies meet the Cumberlands. The topography in this region has characteristics of both ranges, and it doesn't get a lot of tourism either, so it's not as crowded during peak seasons. Moving on, the Cumberland Mountains are sometimes referred to as the Cumberlands, just as the Allegheny Mountains are often called the Alleghenies. And by the way, there are a couple of ways to spell Allegheny. Imagine that. But the Cumberland Mountains are also referred to as the Cumberland Plateau. And yes, the Allegheny Mountains are also often referred to as the Allegheny Plateau. The Alleghenies also include the Pocono and Endless Mountains, ranges of Pennsylvania, but they don't look anything like the Allegheny Mountains in West Virginia, and they're not really connected to the rest of the Alleghenies. Not really. And if you do some Googling on the Cumberland Mountains, many authoritative sources will include regions also belonging to the Allegheny Mountains. And I'm not talking about overlapping areas. It's as if the Cumberland Mountain Range ignores the Alleghenies altogether, and that isn't nice. North Carolina is home to the highest peaks in the Appalachian Mountains, or maybe it isn't. More on this later in the video. Anyway, in North Carolina, there are several mountain ranges belonging to the Appalachian Mountain chain. The Great Balsam Mountains, the Black Mountains, the Bald Mountains, Plot Balsam Mountains, Great Craggy Mountains, and Nansahala Mountains are all in North Carolina. Okay, ready for this? Also in North Carolina, there are some mountains that don't belong to any local mountain range, and they're pretty significant mountains. In this case, they're just called the Blue Ridge Mountains. Sometimes state lines and county lines are also mountain range boundaries, but not always. North Carolina and Tennessee share the Unicoi and Great Smoky Mountains, which must make for some dreadful paperwork. So let me explain how it works. If you're visiting the Black Mountains in North Carolina, the parent mountain chain is the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains are part of the greater Appalachian mountain chain. Too easy, right? I left out the fact that sometimes they change the names and the boundaries of these mountain ranges. Yes, they change the names. But seriously, people get triggered if you don't call a mountain range what they think it should be called. They'll tell you about it too, even when they're absolutely wrong. For instance, while recording an intro to a video, I stated that I was in the Allegheny Mountains of West Virginia. A viewer wrote, those aren't mountains, those are plateaus. And this person is correct, sort of. These are plateaus. In fact, the highest plateau east of the Mississippi is in West Virginia. But on the map, this region of elevated land is referred to as the Allegheny Mountains. But on some maps, the Allegheny Front. And yes, on other maps, the Allegheny Plateau. I wasn't providing a geographical description of this location. I was providing my location on a map. And the map I was using, I bought in a store in West Virginia. Because in case you've never been to West Virginia, it's an amazing state and we love it but there's no cell service there. But honestly, I love all comments and really appreciate them. In fact, leave a comment right now and call these amazing mountains whatever you want to call them, just as long as you appreciate their spectacular beauty. Number 3 highest Appalachian peaks. I thought this would be a no-brainer, but one of the facts in my last 10 fact video about the Appalachian Mountains was about Mount Mitchell. Now, it's an absolute fact that Mount Mitchell is the highest peak in the Appalachian Mountains, but there were several wonderful viewers with good intentions who commented in no uncertain terms that I was absolutely wrong, that the highest peaks were in the White Mountains located in New Hampshire. But Mount Washington isn't even the highest peak in the Appalachian Mountains. Not only is Mount Mitchell taller than Mount Washington, but there are many peaks in the Southern Appalachian Mountains that are taller than Mount Washington, including Clemens Dome in Tennessee. I thought that maybe some of these sincere viewers were trying to say that there might be a higher concentration of tall peaks in the White Mountains. I doubted that too, but I wanted to make sure. And well, no. These wonderful, kind-hearted viewers who took the time to leave a comment are simply misinformed. The highest concentration of the tallest mountains in the Appalachian Mountain chain is in North Carolina, in the southern region of the Appalachian Mountain chain. There are 53 peaks in the Southern Appalachian Mountain chain that are over 6,000 feet in elevation. Together, these peaks have a name, the Southern Sixers. I've hiked many of these giant mountains. Even in East Tennessee, there are at least 10 peaks over 6,000 feet. And between North Carolina and Tennessee combined, there are over 200 mountains over 5,000 feet in elevation. I'm not sure how anyone can arrive at the conclusion that the tallest mountains in the Appalachian chain would be in the Northern Division.
Okay, seriously, when I saw this, I almost second-guessed my sanity. Listen, I've been making videos for over five years. I get things wrong. It happens. But Britannica is supposed to be more trusted than Wikipedia. So I kind of flipped out. I'm almost embarrassed to tell you that I spent over eight hours, yes, that's right, over eight hours making sure I'm not, well, crazy. And no, I'm not crazy. At least not about this. So I did something I've never done before. I submitted a correction that sounded something like this. This information is correct. Factually, the highest elevations of the Appalachian Mountain chain are in the Southern Appalachian Mountain region. In North Carolina alone, there are 53 peaks that are over 1,900 meters. These peaks are called the Southern Sixers. Mount Mitchell is the tallest of these peaks and the tallest mountain in the Appalachian Mountain chain. There are 181 peaks over 1,500 meters in elevation. Tennessee has 10 peaks exceeding 1,900 meters and dozens of peaks exceeding 1,500 meters. Parts of Southern Virginia, also included in the Southern Appalachian Mountain region, is also home to mountains exceeding 1,500 meters. When it comes to elevation, Mount Washington and the surrounding mountains are barely worth mentioning. However, the northern division of the Appalachian Mountain chain is extremely unique and quite fascinating, not to mention beautiful, for reasons that have little to do with their elevation. I've never attempted to correct information in any article before. However, the article is so humorously wrong that I feel morally obligated to help. Most of the details are correct. It's the broad statement highest elevations in the Appalachians are in the North Division that sours the rest. And yes, I sent that. I'll let you know in a few minutes how that worked out. Number two, the trail. I know you've probably heard all about the Appalachian Trail, especially if you've been watching this channel for the past few years. You probably already know it's over 2,200 miles long, making it the longest hiking only footpath in the world. The AT follows the backbone of the Appalachian Mountains, taking you through 14 different states. But you might not know that if you hike the entire AT, the elevation gain and loss is the equivalent of hiking Mount Everest 16 times. The AT is extremely popular and it's shared by all generations. While less than 22,000 people have ever completed a through hike on the Appalachian Trail, less than 22,000 people have completed a through hike or hiking all 2,200 miles, which can take about six months. Millions of people hike the AT annually. Considering its popularity, it's hard to believe that the entirety of the trail is maintained by volunteers organized into 31 district maintenance clubs. Volunteers do everything from maintaining existing trails and painting blazes to excavation along the trail. They even build new shelters. The AT is so popular and it's been such a success that during the summer months, it gets kind of crowded. This success has led to other volunteer-led multi-state trail projects in other parts of the Appalachian Mountain chain. For example, there's the Mountain to Sea Trail, or MST. It stretches for almost 1,200 miles from the Great Smoky Mountains to the Outer Banks. Volunteer projects like this take time. The MST was proposed back in 1977, and it's still not quite finished. The Cumberland Trail in Tennessee, or the CT, begins at Cumberland Gap State Park on the border of Kentucky and Tennessee, and it extends for 210 miles to Signal Mountain, Tennessee. Now this isn't a hiking channel, but we've made a lot of videos hiking on various trails in the Appalachian Mountains. So check this out. I seldom recommend hiking websites because 99% of the time, they really let me down. But if you're interested in a complete website that has a lot of tools for hiking, check out All Trails. And no, this is not a paid advertisement. Like most of YouTube, they don't even know this channel exist. But seriously, this is a great website. Links in the description. Number 1. The Truth About Appalachian Facts including this video. This is New River, and it flows through West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina. Just like Appalachian, nobody knows who named New River. But the name stuck, even though New River isn't new at all. It's one of five oldest rivers in the world. It might even be the oldest. You may have noticed that the debatable facts in this video have a theme, names and designated boundaries. To be fair, controversies surrounding the names and boundaries of any location one may find on any map can be controversial, strongly debated, scandalous, and sometimes it can lead to war. When you look at a map, it's easy to understand why these mountain ranges are lumped up together into one mountain chain. From above, that's what it looks like. These mountains of the east are ancient. But as passionate as people are about the name Appalachian, the name hasn't been associated with all this mountain range very long, just over 100 years. In recent years, the Great Valley is now commonly referred to as the Great Appalachian Valley. You know, people spend their lives becoming experts at something. And that includes those sneaky, boundary-changing, Pangea-loving, geologist. Speaking of geologist, in 1596, a cartographer named Abraham Artilius is believed to be the first to suggest the continents were once joined and later separated, but no one really paid much attention. Centuries later, in 1912, a scientist named Alfred Wigener noticed that the continents of the Earth seemed to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Wigener declared that the continents move over geologic time relative to each other and appear to have drifted across the ocean bed. He called this movement continental displacement. Experts of the time 
time called Wegener Delirious, a drunk, and a peddler of Germanic pseudoscience. Oh yeah, Wegener wasn't a geologist, so he didn't fit in the club. He died in 1930 and was largely forgotten. Don't let websites fool you as they gloss over the fact that even 40 years ago, Pangaea, the supercontinent, was at best considered French science, maybe slightly more credible than ancient aliens. But beginning in the 1950s, evidence began piling up. Quietly, the idea picked up steam, and now modern geology has shown that Pangaea did actually exist. They even used the word actually. Every website related to the topic says the same thing. It's a fact, and it will remain a fact unless new discoveries are made and evidence begins pointing a different direction. But as one of the five oldest rivers in the world, maybe even the oldest of the five, it depends on who you ask, it's a fact that New River isn't affected by the latest research, opinion, or ideas. It flows through the shadows of these mountains regardless as to what they're called, unchanged by the ironic name it's been given. I bet that was the longest facts video you've ever watched on YouTube. Did you enjoy this video? I really hope so, and I'd like for you to tell me what you think about it in the comments. We love the mountains, so take some time and check out our playlist. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you're subscribed and that you've clicked the bell for notifications. My name is Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life. Hey, if you like this video, you'll enjoy one of these videos too.